Today's video is the last in the magnetic fields topic. And it's just tidying up the last few bits that you need to know about electromagnetic induction. The first thing I'm going to talk about today is alternating current, which you probably know a good deal about already, but there's a small bit extra here at A level. So with alternating current, it's obviously current that moves in one direction for some of the time, half its time period, and in the other direction for the other half of its time period. So it has, obviously, a time period, and that is 1 over the frequency, just like time period before. The frequency of mains AC in the UK, which of course is the one that they use for all exams, is 50 Hertz. Which of course makes the time period here 0.02 seconds. Remembering of course that the time period is from start to finish. So it will spend 0.01 seconds in positive and 0.01 second in negative. Other things that you need to know about alternating current. Well we have this peak voltage, obviously it comes to a peak. That peak voltage is given the symbol V0. So that peak voltage is going to be the maximum EMF that is induced in our generator. And if you haven't seen my generator's video, I will put a link to it here so that you can go through to it and at the end of the video. So this will be when the coil in your generator is completely horizontal. So as it passes through that horizontal part, you're going to get the peak voltage produced because that's where the flux linkage is at a maximum. And you're going to get the zero voltage produced or induced when the coil is vertical. So as it moves from horizontal through to vertical, you get these peaks and zeros being produced. To measure the peak voltage, you could just measure from the zero line up to the largest amplitude. The only problem with that is that you have to be careful. You might have what's called a zero offset. In other words, if you look carefully at the oscillation, the bottom side might be slightly shorter than the top or vice versa. So just to make sure that no zero offset causes you issues with the value of the peak voltage, the best thing to do is to measure the peak to peak voltage. So all the way down and then divide that by two. Now we're told that the mains AC is 230 volts in the UK. That is not the peak voltage. That is something called the VRMS. RMS here stands for root mean square, and it's very similar to thermodynamics where we get the root mean square speed of the particles. And for the same reason, you cannot really calculate an average voltage here because obviously, because we've got matching peaks and matching troughs here, if you found the average of all the voltages, it's going to add up to zero. So with that average, you can't tell the difference between AC voltage and zero voltage. So instead, we do something called the root mean square. And that is exactly what it says. You take every voltage and you square it, thereby making all of your voltage squares positive. Then you take the mean of those squares, and you take the square root of the mean of the squares. The label on it tells you what to do. Square them first, find the mean, find the square root of that mean. You can find the equivalent current, your IO, by using Ohm's law, which is VO over R, assuming that R is constant and why would it not be? So we have both an oscillating voltage like this and an oscillating current, and you can find one from the other using Ohm's law. Now clearly the VRMS is going to be related to the peak voltage. You do not need to know how the equation for this is derived, you just need to be able to use it, and that says that VRMS is equal to V over root 2, and the equivalent for current. The other part of this video is about what our specification calls linked coils, without being very specific about what they mean by this. The classic example of a linked coil system is the transformer, which you will have done at GCSE, but I'm going to go through again here briefly, so that just to remind you. So with a transformer, we have two coils, a primary and a secondary coil. So I'm going to use this as an example of how this linked coil idea works. It's very important that the input into the primary coil is AC, because the whole thing works on the fact that it's AC. Let's imagine for a moment that we have current that's going in at the top and out at the bottom. We know that when current passes through a coil like this, a magnetic field is generated around the coil. And I'll just draw in two magnetic field lines so that it doesn't clutter up the diagram. But remember, the direction of the field depends on the direction of the current. So because it's AC, 
that current changes direction 50 times a second. That means that your magnetic field is going to flip 50 times a second. So what you have effectively is a magnet that spins over on the left hand side here. We've got a spinning magnet or at least a spinning magnetic field. This soft iron core here, when the primary coil produces a magnetic field, the soft iron core becomes magnetized. It basically amplifies the field. And that means that this field then continues outwards. It goes far enough that this coil then becomes linked with this magnetic field. And it's the linkage that's important. Because, of course, remember, that magnetic field is changing. When you get relative motion between a coil and a field, you get EMF induced in the coil. So the fact that that field is moving induces an EMF in our secondary coil here. The main use for transformers, and transformers themselves have come up on A-level papers, but also things that don't look very like transformers, but are, and we will get to that in a moment. The main use for transformers is to change the voltage from 230 volts into something else. This is used in the national grid to improve the efficiency of the grid, but a transformer can be used in all sorts of situations. The V out, the AC voltage that you get out, depends upon the relative number of turns on the primary and secondary coil. So if you've got the same number of turns on each, then whatever voltage AC you have putting in, you will get the same voltage out. If you double the turns on the secondary compared to the primary, you're going to get double the voltage out. And if you half the turns on the secondary, you'll get half the voltage out. So it's a very straightforward ratio, number of turns to output voltage compared with input voltage. You do need to be able to explain this. And the key to this is keep remembering the word alternating. An alternating current in the primary coil produces an alternating magnetic field. The iron core amplifies that or the iron core becomes magnetized. The secondary coil is now linked with that alternating field and this induces an alternating EMF in the secondary coil. It does seem excessive to use that alternating all the time but if you look at mark schemes they are looking for you to use the correct terminology and that is it. And to finish this video, it's not a very long one, I thought I would show you one of the transformers that's not a transformer. Examples that have come up in A-level papers before. So this is an amp clamp and it's used to measure current in a live wire coming from the main supply. And the key here is they tell you it's the main supply so you know that it's AC. So there's AC current going through that wire under test. You've got an iron core that clamps around it and then you've got your secondary coil that is wrapped around that iron core. So we have an alternating current in the test wire. That's going to produce an alternating magnetic field around that test wire. The iron core is there to become magnetized to amplify the field. That field is linked to that second coil and therefore an EMF is induced in that second coil according to Faraday's law. There are plenty of examples if you search through past papers, plenty of examples of questions like this where they throw in a transformer. There's another one with a toothbrush and it's charging base, also a transformer. So if you search through, you will find them.